So the day has finally come. Crossover 25 has now finally released and it is still the best way to run Windows games on a Mac. And with Crossover 25 comes a whole host of brand new changes and fixes, which allow many more Windows titles, especially games that have been very recently released, to now work on a Mac. And these include you titles like Red Charles. Dead Redemption 2, which now this runs through D3D Metal 2.1 and runs better oh. than ever. And we also have new titles like Split Fiction, Uncharted, The Lost of Us, titles which we didn't actually think would ever run on a Mac, but they are now running at very high performance. So one thing to note before we get started is the fact that there is a time limited sale of 25% off Crossover Plus, but this is only gonna last until March 25th. So what I wanna do now is show you how to take advantage of this deal, how to install Crossover 25 and get Windows games running on a Mac. And then I'm gonna go through all of the brand new features and quality of life fixes. So first thing to do is to click on the link at the top of the video description in order to get a Mac massive 25% off discount, which is valid until the 25th of March. Every purchase made after clicking this link is going to help to support this channel and the content that I create. But if you're watching this in the future and you missed this discount window, you can actually use the Apple Gaming Wiki new discount code and get an evergreen 20% off instead. So once you've clicked on the link in the description, you'll be taken to the store page here with the discount automatically applied. You can actually do a free trial if you wanted to, but if you did want to purchase this, I do recommend buying Crossover Plus. This isn't actually a subscription service. It's actually going to give you a permanent license for Crossover 25 if you buy it right now and any version of Crossover released in the next 12 months. But what you can do as well is click the Try Now button and make use of a completely free 14-day free trial. So just go ahead and enter your name and email address and then click to download the trial now. So here it's saying Crossover is now downloading and it's going to go into our Downloads folder. So then we're going to go ahead to Finder and then we're going to go to our Downloads folder and then we'll find the Crossover zip file, which we'll double click on. And then once that's extracted, we're going to drag and drop this into our Applications folder. And then within Applications, we're going to scroll down until we find Crossover and then we'll double click on the application here. So just double click on that. And it's saying here, Crossover is an app downloaded from the internet. Let's open it up now. So now Crossover has opened up and we're now free to go ahead and download a multitude of Windows games and applications. What we're going to do now is to download Steam. So we're going to click the install button here, do a search for the word Steam and then click on the Steam icon here. And then we're going to go ahead and install it. And it's going to go ahead and create what's called the Steam bottle. And then it's going to put all of our Windows Steam files in one place. So if it asks to install fonts, just press yes and then just continue and allow this to complete. You can see it's running some stuff in the background and it's automatically agreeing to to all of the windows there. Here we're going to agree to the terms and conditions, press install, and we're going to install Visual C++ here as well, close. And then the Windows version of Steam is now loading up. So just press next here, next, and we're going to install Steam in the local directory and then click finish, and then it's going to run Steam. So here we can see that the Windows version of Steam is now updating. And now the Windows version of Steam's login window pops up and we can log in with our Steam account. I'm going to be logging in using my phone app and I can go ahead and scan the QR code on screen and then we're going to log into my existing Steam account. And now our Windows Steam library is loading up here and we can basically download and install a bunch of Windows games. Many of them will actually work through Crossover 25. So for example, here, I'm just going to go to my library. Let's install something like Skyrim Special Edition. So just click the install button and then install it within the local drive. So once Skyrim is downloaded, we can go ahead and press the play button, press accept. It's going to go ahead and install a dependency in the background. And now the launcher is going to launch and set the graphics options here. And we can go ahead and press the play button and launch it at default settings. So here, I'm just going to continue one of my old save games. And uh, what you can see is that on the top right hand side of the screen, we have the Metal HUD. And this tells you the frame rate counter for anything running through the Metal Graphics API. And by default, Skyrim is actually running through DXMT. So this is the DirectX to Metal translation there that works through DirectX 11 games. And this has actually been selected by default. Previously on other versions of Crossover, you needed to set the exact graphics API that we were using. And you also needed to make a new cross tie in order to fix all the audio issues within the game. However, now running through default settings now turns on the most optimal settings for you. And it's becoming a lot more Proton-like in its use as an end user. So it's very cool to see that we have some quality of life improvements, but that's not all that's happening here with Crossover 25. We also have Wine, which has been updated to 10.0, 
bringing with it over 5,000 changes that offer improvements to a variety of games and applications. We've got Wine Mono 9.4.0 update, VKT3D has been updated to 1.14, Walton VK has been updated to 1.2.10, and lastly we have D3D Metal 2.1. So what's exciting about this is the fact that Codeweavers released D3D Metal 2.1 within Crossover at about the same time that Apple released Game Porting Toolkit 2.1, and what this means is that Apple are still collaborating with Codeweavers behind the scenes because they must have sent it to them in order for these two things to be released at the same time. So it means that this D3D Metal project is still continuing to be developed and this has a very healthy future. But just in case Apple decides to deprecate D3D Metal, then we do have an alternative, which is the aforementioned DXMT, which although it can only translate DirectX 11 games to Metal, it is open source, which means that it could be maintained by the open source community well into the future. And in addition to all of these fixes, we also have additional support for launches like GOG Galaxy and the Epic Game Store. So you don't necessarily have to use the Heroic Games Launcher in order to launch games. You can do it directly now through Crossover. And Crossover is now capable of auto and enabling AVX for games that currently require the Rosetta Advertise AVX equals one flag to be turned on in the past. And now what this means is that the Windows game compatibility for the Apple Silicon Mac has expanded and it's bigger than ever and it includes brand new games and also fan favorites as well. So the real big hit of Crossover 25 is the fact that Red Dead Redemption 2 can now run performatively on the Apple Silicon Mac through Crossover. So this was working recently through Crossover Preview under Wine D3D. However, it looks like Apple have put together a version of D3D Metal 2.1, which now allows Red Dead Redemption 2 to actually work a hell of a lot better on a Mac. Now the game isn't perfect, there are some significant shadow issues, but this is a gigantic improvement over what we had in the past. And although it's possible to actually get this to run on an M1 MacBook Air with only 8GB of RAM, I would recommend a more powerful machine with at least 16GB of RAM in order to get this to work. Next up, the game Split Fiction seems to run perfectly well on the Apple Silicon Mac through Crossover 25. Here we're running on the M3 Max at 1080p high graphics settings. And one of the main things that you want to note for a cooperative game like this is the fact that we have full controller support. What's cool is that the game would pick up my DualSense controllers and it even supported the changing of the LED color lights on it to represent each player. Next, we have one of the most requested titles, which is The Last of Us Part 1. This is the remake of the game which was ported over to PC. And here we're able to play this game now for the first time with Crossover 25. There were some sound issues, which I believe I fixed by changing the frequency of the MIDI output device. And overall, the game is running really well on the Mac, considering all the translation layers in effect. This is running at 1080p high on the M3 Max chip. So overall, a fantastic addition to the Mac lineup. I'm hoping that Part 2 is also going to work just as well. That comes out in April, so hopefully I'll be testing that out and seeing if it works on Crossover 25. And next we have another Naughty Dog game, Uncharted 4. So this of course uses the same game engine as The Last of Us, and so it's not entirely surprising that this also works. Frame rates are surprisingly good once again. However, just note that this game appears to have a pretty bad memory leak. Here we're running at about 16 gigabytes of RAM. However, if you play for long periods of time, it just goes up and up and up. This machine only has 48 gigabytes of RAM, but we're already exceeding that here. So just be aware this is not working perfectly on a Mac at the moment. Hopefully this is going to get fixed in the future. So next we have a bunch of new releases. So we have games like Avowed working. So this is the new Obsidian RPG, which is a first person kind of successor to something like Skyrim or the Outer Wilds, but in a fantasy magic world. And this is pretty much working out of the box, running at 1080p on medium settings. And another recently released game is Lost Records, Bloom and Rage. This is made by Don't Nod Entertainment, and it's kind of a successor to Life is Strange. So unfortunately, earlier titles in the series did have Mac ports, but this is Windows only, but seems to work pretty well through crossover. And another recently released title, Ninja Gaiden 2 Black, which is the latest Team Ninja release on Windows PC, is managing to run here at 1080p high quality at nearly 60 FPS. And lastly, we are looking at Tokyo Extreme Racer. So this is a racing game that's currently in early access. And it looks like another great title to add to Windows game compatibility on the Mac, all thanks to Crossover. So anyway, that is my Crossover video and my look at recently released games. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you found any other games that are working on Crossover 25, then please make sure to leave a comment. In my next videos, I'll be covering the Mac Studio M3 Ultra and the M4 MacBook Air will be running plenty of Crossover 25 games. So make sure to check them out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.